Okay. Murray, Wallace, Charles Morton, Marion. God damn it, I can't. You can barely make out little Wallace down there in the middle left. <clears throat> but this is their marriage record, and this is in 1767. You can barely make out up there. It's available at Ancestry.com. It's the St. George Bloomberry Church. <clears throat> now, this is St. James Chronicle 1795. Oh, same thing I got already. Don't need a second one of those. This is um, written by Charles Morton, president of the Royal Society. And he is basically kissing George III's butt. Um, trying to reassure him he's still going to be king and not... The George III was had a bout of insanity and was it's questionable if he's going to be able to retain the throne, throne for a little while. <clears throat> this here is March 6, 1799, death announcement. Late Dr. Morton of the British Museum. Married Lady Savile, mother of George Savile, an upright patriot whose public principles, virtues were esteemed by all parties. A fine whole length portrait <coughs> of this ample character, painted by Benjamin Wilson, has been presented by Dr. Morton's w widow. Yeah, that's the same portrait that he would will to her when he died in February of the same year. Yeah. <clears throat> a month earlier, clears probate, and she's going to donate it to the city of London. This is Dr. Morton was. Uh, Lady Savile was Dr. Morton's second wife. Now, in this account that I got, there are some. A lot of the names of descendants. <clears throat> um. You read okay. This is I think this is from the Dictionary of National Biography, and a lot of this stuff that has anything to do with anything with the name Savile in it has all these very <coughs> illusionary comments or or um, you know like the were in fact um, there was this. I'm pretty sure that I love of God if I could find this person. George Savile died. The, the, the biography of George Savile died in 1784. <clears throat> um, talks about his election. I, I'm not going to be able to find it. Here it is. Sir Conyers Darcy. There's a Darcy Morton. There's a Savile Morton. <laughs> this is all situated up in um, in York, where the, the Brooks came from, Honoretta Pratt came from. <coughs> Lord Scarborough has lately received admission to his fortune of 2000 by the death of his grandmother, Lady Savile. Miss Pratt, who lived with Lady Savile many years, has generally worth about a legacy of two thousand pounds. <clears throat> I've yet to see Lady Savile's will to, to specify that. Doctor Morton, who married Mrs. Pratt, doubles her age. This is supposed to be the fashionable quid qui pro quo, and a retaliation upon the sexagenary passion of young men. I'm not sure. This is an indenture between. Charles Morton and a man named um, George Brown. So it was sent to me by um, Jill Gray. And I think it came out of Westmoreland County. And I'm not sure how. Or what it has to do. It seems like it's some kind of lease. I wish I knew more about it. Here is the marriage of um, 1791. Yesterday, James Jones Bloomsbury, uh, Miss Pratt, 
Uh, we'll get to, uh, oh yeah, here it is, here it is. Here it is, here it is. Okay, uh, this is the published version of the marriage record that I flashed. It was, wasn't even seeable. I can't even get this to focus right. And this happens to be a little better than the ones in Windows. On Tuesday last, on the 25th instant, was married in the parish church, changed Jordan to Bloomberry, Charles Morton, Dr. Physic, to Lady Savile, Twickenham, in the county of Middlesex. So it was not 1772. And there is more. Here's some mention about Miss Honoretta Pratt, a sister to James Brooke of Bart, part of Ellenthorpe, York. And that, that election with George Savile was in that area, from that other biography. Here is, okay, another one, 1791, Elizabeth Pratt, and with her was the Prince of Wales. <laughs> His Royal Highness on the same day at the same church, the Prince of Wales, who's getting married, was the same time, the same day that Charles Morton, M.D., married uh, Miss Pratt, daughter of Joseph Pratt. This is the Barnaby line. Um, the Barnabys were descendants of, of Charles Morton by his daughter, Elizabeth Morton, who married James Dancy. Arthur Pratt Winter Morton is the son of, of Pierce Morton. I'm going all over the place. This is a little bit on the Freeman family. The Freeman family then changed into the Sidebottom Venner family. Uh, this is the Act of Parliament relating to Pierce Morton. And in here, here's John Charles Tatlow, John Pratt Winter. <coughs> There's Pierce Morton, there's mortgages, there's executors, there's a lot of things going on here, but there here is uh, Edward Morton. That is the ancestor went to Canada there. a relinquishment of the states in, in Ireland. I mean, this is huge. <laughs> the big thing, basically, that's what it is. This is the schedule of, and as I said, here's the Corner Kill, the Dermora, Kill Necrot, and all that stuff. So this has a lot to do with <coughs> Sons of Evermore. And this year, I don't know what year this was, 7th and 8th of Victoria, but I, I don't... 1844. I think about that time, Edward Morton went to Canada. <laughs> okay. And... Then there is this very strange... account here that may or may not have to do with Dr. Morton, but it mentions a Arabella, Arabella Bolton. I think Arabella Bolton had something to do with. Uh, again, all of this is just. <coughs> here's Mr. Byron. Here's Mrs. Gould. See, here's a ghoul. This may be very important here. This is a very strange... Um, I really should look at this. I found it, but it's hard. Okay, this is the Middlesex Journal, 1775. And, okay. <clears throat> the Mary Jane Claremont and... Um, Drawing a blank, so damn complicated. 
the lady who had her will written in French that had um, a relation had um, was made an ex executor of Charles Morton's will and Charles Morton's name is found amongst the papers in the Nottingham archives somehow relate to her it was related to a Fanny Gould okay and here is a, something mentioned a Gould it gets like this in all these things there is a um, mention of a Mr. Byron has something to do with Mr. Shelley, and then we got a Mr. Morton, a surgeon doing something or other in Catherine Street, and um, it's just not really clear what was going on. <clears throat> Suppose wife was cleaning the child, discover venereal disease. Oh, great. Okay, I'm not too sure. And then here is a little bit about Mr. Um, Mr. Mady and Dr. Morton. Both of them were actually students at Leiden of the same professor. And he also had the gout. And this says he shows the light at the slightest incentive initiative, but I, I really, again, am at. The trustees were to complain more than once his failure to carry out the duties. On May 26, 1781, angrily commented that he had the undoubted right to the constant tenants of the officers whenever the museum was open. Mr. Morton certainly took his duties lightly. When, even when, as in 1780, the very existence of the museum was threatened by savage mobs. Um, he wouldn't leave Twickingham. I don't know. There's just some people that just come and they just, you know, yeah, I'm just gonna. <clears throat> I remember when the LA mob, LA riots took place. I wasn't gonna rush down to LA and tell everybody to stop. You know, I mean, it's a riot for God's sakes. Here is the death of Joseph, A. Joseph Pratt at Cavan, which is very promising. Um, but that's March 2nd, 1831, so <laughs> it's kind of late. Or is it? No, yeah, yeah, it is. Now here is one of the notices I was talking about earlier. Um, 1754... Um, the gentlemen of the county of Westmoreland are desired to dine at the Half Moon Tavern in Chesapeake uh, for an annual meeting, and Dr. Morton is one of them, and I, I know that, and he's got a ton of these. Here is March 2nd, same notice. Here is March 9th. On Tuesday, the last annual lecture of Lady Sadler was read at the Royal Society by Dr. Morton. Uh, Beaster Fields, one of the fellows of the society, and that is seven days la later. Almost it makes me wonder if the Dr. Morton of Kindle is the same Dr. Morton. Yesterday, uh, General Committee of the Family Hospital, it was agreed for the future to have two physicians agreeable to possible Dr. Conyers, and upon his resignation, and we hear that Dr. Morton and Dr. Caught again will be appointed without opposition. This is September 27, 1764. Um, and 1754. Is that 54? No, that's going to be 54. October 31st. Um, yesterday, the uh, General Corps of the Family Ho Hospital, uh, Dr. Caddy and Merrim were elected by ballot to physicians of the hospital. London Evening Post, 1754. Anything in here? Same thing, elected. Okay, and this is a little bit about um, Charles Morton was a student of 